I know that an ash tree stands called Yggdrasil, a high tree soaked with shining loam. From there comes the dews which fall in the valley. Evergreen, it stands over the weird. Poetic Edda, stanza 19. Yggdrasil is also known as the World Tree. It is what supports and connects all of the nine worlds to one another. There are many creatures that live on Yggdrasil. At the top of the world tree sits a mighty eagle, and between the eagle's eyes sits a hawk. Down in its roots lives the dragon Nidhogg, who gnaws on the roots of the world tree. There is also a squirrel called Ratatask that travels up and down the world tree. Ratatask delights in telling lies and causing mischief. It brings malicious messages from the eagle to the dragon, and from the dragon to the eagle, fueling their dislike of one another. No mortal can perceive the world tree. To us, it is invisible, but it can be traveled and climbed by other beings. It is from this tree that Odin hung himself, making the world tree a gallows, and himself the gallows god. The roots of Yggdrasil reach down and deep and far and up into many worlds. It is fed by three wells. The well of Uld is in Asgard, in the heavens, in the highest branches of the sacred tree. Uld means origin or past. It is also called the well of fate. It is guarded by three norns, and it is to this well that each day the gods gather and hold their counsel. Another of the roots leads to Jotunheim, where it is nourished by the Well of Wisdom. Mimir guards this well, the most wise being in all of existence. It is in this well that Odin's eye sits. He cut it out and placed it in the well so that he may drink from it and gain wisdom. The last of the wells is in Niflheim, the Mist World. Here lies Havergilmir, the oldest of the wells. In this well are innumerable snakes, and guarding it is the terrible dragon Nidhogg, ever gnawing on the roots. Odin says that the world tree suffers agony more than any man could ever know, because of the animals that chew its roots and branches of the sacred tree. This is Helheim, or Hell home of the dishonorable dead. To get to hell, one must cross the river slit. The river is made of razor-sharp knives and swords, and those who swim across it are left covered in deep cuts and gashes. A massive hound called Garn guards hell, and it's one building, a huge torture chamber, made of twisting living serpents. The venom from these snakes drips into your cuts, and all who go there never know joy or happiness again. Hela is its ruler. She is the daughter of Loki. She offers those who come to her what she has to eat from a plate called hunger and a knife called famine. It is from Hel that the largest ship there is or ever will be, Nagelfa, will set sail. Nagelfar is made from the fingernails of the damned. It will carry Hela and Loki and the army of the dead to end the world come Ragnarok. This is Muspelheim, the fire world. Muspelheim was involved in the creation of everything, and will be involved in its destruction. Nothing can live in Muspelheim, for it is as hot as a blacksmith's fire. Nothing that is but Surt, the dreaded fire demon. Surt has spent eons forging his great sword. It is massive and incredibly hot, and burns so brightly that no mortal can look upon it. Yet there is one sword that can match Surt's, but it was given away for love by Frey. 
Freya is a god of the Vanir and brother to Freya. His magical sword could fight on its own if wise be he who wields it. Alas, without this sword, Frey will be no match for Surt, and come Ragnarok, Surt will kill Frey and many others. Niflheim is the mist world. It is dark here and cold, colder than any cold could be. It is here that Nidhogg lives, guarding one of the great wells. Niflheim is filled with tall peaks and massive glaciers and dense chilly fog. Eons ago, the cold, mist, and waters from Niflheim crept into the unending void called Ganunga Gap, or Yawning Gap. It was there that it met with the fires of Muspelheim, and upon their meeting an awesome phenomenon took place. Where the fire and ice touched came an explosion bigger than the mind could hold. Over time, the meeting of fire and ice caused the birth of the giant, Ymir, Bigger than worlds it was, and it was from this giant that our world was made by Odin and Vili and Ve when they slew him. Midgard is where we make our home. It is also called the Middle Fortress, and was created by Odin and Vili and Ve to raise warriors to fight for them come Ragnarok. Midgard is a flat disk, and the sea encircles its perimeter. In this sea lives Jormungandr, the great snake and child of Loki. It is so massive it encircles the land, and thanks to Thor, its tail is in its mouth. The crashing waves at sea are a result of its twisting body as it tries to escape its own bite. Midgard is made of the remains of Ymir. From its eyelashes was made the great fence that keeps giants at bay. The sky is made from Ymir's skull, and the clouds are made of its brains. The sea is made of Ymir's blood and Ymir's tears. All of the sand and gravel are made of Ymir's teeth, while the rocks and mountains are made of its bones. And lastly, the ground is made of Ymir's flesh. High above us all lies Asgard, home of the gods. Here is where Odin lives with his wife Frigg, queen of the Aesir. Asgard is a perfect place. It is neither too cold nor too hot, but always pleasantly warm with soft breezes. It has a wall of its own, so tall that no giant could climb it, so tough that not even the strongest troll could batter through it. This wall was made by a mountain giant when it tried to take the sun and the moon and Freya the beautiful. Asgard is where Valhalla lies. Valhalla is where the dead go that died well. It is a massive hall with 540 doors, each so wide that 800 warriors could comfortably walk through side by side. The roof is covered with golden shields, and the walls are made from spears. Each morning, the Vikings in Valhalla will head out to the plains of Asgard and fight. The sound of battle soon envelops that place as great warriors meet each other in bloody battle. Fearless and bold, they kill each other and are killed in turn, training for Ragnarok. At the end of the day's battle, each man is made whole again, as they feast on the meat of the giant magical pig and drink the mead from the goat that eats the leaves of Yggdrasil. Next to Asgard in the heavens is Alfheim, the home of the Light Elves. Of this world, Frey is its ruler, who travels there on his golden boar, Gullinbasti, the golden bristled one. Little is known about Elfheim, but its residents, the Light Elves, frequently help or hinder mortals according to their whim. 
The light elves are beautiful, luminous beings, described as being more beautiful than the sun. They are minor gods and goddesses of nature and of fertility. If you strive for a good harvest, you would do well to appease the light elves, for if you displease them, you do so at your own peril. Though we do not know what Elfheim looks like, for certain anyhow, we can imagine how it might be based on what we do know of its inhabitants. Still, it is only a guess, and is shrouded in much mystery. Jotunheim is the home of the giants, the sworn enemies of the Aesir. The inhabitants of Jotunheim are as rugged and dangerous as the land itself. No farms there are in Jotunheim, as it is too cold and infertile for crops. Jotunheim is instead filled with dense forest, steep mountains, and violent rivers. The giants of Jotunheim feed off the animals that live in that harsh forest, and of fish they catch from its freezing waters. Jotunheim is where Loki comes from. Loki is the blood brother of Odin, and he is Thor's friend and Thor's betrayer. Loki is not a force for evil, though. He is certainly not a force for good, either. Loki is... complicated. The gods sometimes journey into Jotunheim. One such venture brought Loki and Thor to Utgard, where its ruler cast strange enchantments upon the gods. This caused Thor to drink so much of the sea that it caused the tides. And this is also where Thor, much to the bewilderment of those gathered, fought the unstoppable force of old age. Such was Thor's display of extraordinary power that it caused the ruler, Utgard Loki, the Loki of Utgard, to be so stricken with fear that he banished Thor and his companions using powerful enchantments, causing Utgard to be hidden to Thor and his awesome strength. This is Vanaheim home of the gods of the Vanir. The Vanir are brother and sister, gods and goddesses that make the ground ripe for planting and help the crops grow. The Vanir are masters of magic and of sorcery, and early in the dawn of time, the gods of the Aesir and the gods of the Vanir warred against one another. Too well matched they were, and it soon came to be known by all that none could win the war. Moreover, that a great battle should be followed by feasting, and one cannot feast if the crops will not grow. And so a peace was then made, and that peace was made binding by each of the gods spitting into a bowl. It was from this mingled spittle that was born Kvasir, wisest of all the gods. The blood of Kvasir would be made into the mead of poetry, and it is by this mead that all mortals gain the ability to craft songs and poems and mighty sagas. The Vanya are powerful wielders of magics indeed. Last, but certainly not least, is Nidabelli, also known as Svartalfheim, the home of the dwarves. Svartalfheim is a dark and low place. The dwarves who are master craftsmen, live under its ground in a massive labyrinth honeycomb of cavernous complexes. Many mines and forges there are in Svartalfheim for the dwarves to craft their works. But do not think this place to be dreary, for the dwarves are lavish and skillful and have made their home a place of ornate subterranean wonder. In the north of Svartalfheim stands the Golden Hall of Sindri's family, and it was in this place that Thor's hammer, Mjolnir, was crafted. So too was Odin's spear and Frey's boar. Even the magical bindings that hold the great wolf, Fenrir, were made by the dwarves down there, out of materials that do not exist. The sound of a cat's step, the spit of a bird, and the breath of a fish with the beard of a woman all went into the making of the binding of the wolf. The dwarves of Svartalfheim are not short creatures by any means. 
large of stature and burly they are, hard as the rock they call their home. And so ends this telling of the Nine Worlds and some of its inhabitants. It fills me with joy that I can bring these tales to you as my ancestors once did, and I thank you for watching and for listening. I leave you with a question. What world would you visit first if you could climb Yggdrasil? But you're still here. It's over. Go home. Well, I guess since you won't go away, I'll take this moment to thank my fantastic and wonderful patrons. You guys are amazing. Thank you very much. I love you a long time. Over here, you'll find a couple of videos I've done. This one is my most recent upload, and this one is one that YouTube has decided via its algorithms that you might enjoy. We all know how wonderful and fantastic and perfect YouTube's algorithms are, so I'm sure you have nothing to fear. Okay, luck. Chicka, chicka.